ورسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول كل بدعة ضلالة so the question of the brother was that um, was along the lines that obviously there's a lot of uh, nashat in da'wah in the sense that you know people have the means to broadcast themselves and to call to what they're upon and so in the midst of all of that there are some innovations which are very very clear and apparent to the average person the bid'ah of the Shia, of the Rafida, who detest the companions, uh, the bid'ah of the grave worshippers say, you know, so th these are apparent things, but then there are also types of uh, people where the innovation is obscure. Maybe they ascribe to the Sunnah, maybe they ascribe to Salafiyyah. How does one, this is what I'm understanding from your question, how does one uh, be cautious and to learn those types of uh, affairs so uh, as the brother mentioned obviously there are some things which are very very clear and very apparent and these are things that obviously uh, in the course of seeking knowledge and teaching the foundations uh, whether we learn them ourselves or teach them to our children there are certain things which are from the basic foundations that we that we should know um, that we should know as 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 the foundation for example uh, you know the bid'ah of the khawarij uh, of the Rafida who hate the companions of the Khawarij who basically revolt and rebel and bring about turmoil and ruin the bid'ah of the uh, of the Sufis and some of their doctrines uh, these are all apparent things that we should that we should know and have a good clear understanding how the Muslim Ummah split how it divided you know what are the main groups there are the Khawarij there are the Rafida there are the Murjia who expel actions from Iman there is the Qadariya who deny Al Qadr that Allah knows and decrees and wills and creates the actions of the servants? Likewise, the bid'ah of the Jahmiya, who brought philosophy into speech about Allah, His names, His attributes, and then the various offshoots of the Jahmiya, uh, the Mu'tazila, uh, the Kullabiya, the Ash'ariya, Maturidiya. Then we have like the Falasifa, uh, Mutafalsifa, the pseudo philosophers who basically put uh, you know they try to merge philosophy uh, with the Quran and then there is the 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 aqlaniyya, the modernist the rationalists who believe that the aql is supreme and this decides you know what is right and wrong belief and good law bad law like legislation and you know what is harmful beneficial all the, these are basics that we as uh, students or as people who you know who value the sunnah and who know who the ulama and who know the way of the salaf these are the basics that we should already have mastered to you know with, with some degree of of study we should be familiar with these types of things right uh, the first four sects you know the khawarij rafida murji'a qadariya what, what what are the basic deviations of each one and then what sects came afterwards well the jahmiya and the mu'tazila then you have the, the you know various um, other orientations the mutasawwifa the sufis and then you have the mutafalsifa uh, the people of philosophy so uh, at a basic level we should have a good grasp because the, these are historical things which happened but the effects of which continued in the ummah right until this day of ours right so all those old sects have people who are upon what they were upon and who perpetuate what they were upon. So that's all. This is something that we should have as, as basics, as students of, of knowledge and with some, you know, length of, of study. However, as we know, uh, there are also people who, uh, you know, they, they make a display or they ascribe to Salafiyyah, but they're not really upon the way of the Salaf. And they bring with them false beliefs or false principles false methodological principles and so this is a bit more difficult and a bit more subtle uh, because not everybody has that level of knowledge and understanding to be able to clearly see you know well this it, it is not in accordance with so how do we what do we do well we return back to the scholars this is the way we are guided in these types of issues and so there, there are a number of steps that we that we can use 
uh, in this regard. The first of them is obviously, like I said, uh, go back to the scholars and their refutations and their speech about the contemporary people, the contemporary figureheads, the contemporary callers. So if we take the last century by way of example, we know that the scholars of the Muslims, uh, the people of the Sunnah, they have spoken about, for example, Hassan al-Banna, Sayyid Qutb, Maududi, um, you know, and Nabahani. These are all people who are from uh, Al-Ikhwan, Al-Muslimin, Hizb tahrir all these kind of politicized jama'at who have errors in the field of Tawheed, in the field of methodology. Uh, likewise, they speak about um, uh, other, other people more contemporary who inherited the ideas of those people. Abdurrahman, Abdul Khaliq, Adnan, Arur, um, you know, Mahmoud Al Haddad, uh, Abdul Latif Bashmi. These are now, you know, like another level of version of those. You know previous people and the scholars have refutations you know against them and then there are other so in a nutshell what i'm saying is the first thing is to return back to the scholars right and to see whom the scholars have they written against and written about and what ideas have they written about in the contemporary age and this is in every age and every era as the messenger of Allah he said La tazalu min ummati zahirina ala al -haq. There will never cease to be a faction from my Ummah uh, manifestly upon the truth. And they will not be harmed by those who oppose them, nor those who abandon them, who desert them. So, so as we said, uh, the first thing is to return back to the scholars of your age, of your era, the scholars upon uh, manifestly upon Tawheed and Sunnah, who call with the call of the prophets and messengers in rectifying the society. So we go back to them and we find an abundance of material information, knowledge, understanding about uh, the jama'at, the groups, you know, the individual, the afraad, the individuals, you know, the callers, whom the scholars have spoken about. So that's the, that's the you know, uh, second thing. The third thing is simply to know who are the people upon manifestly and clearly upon the way of the Salaf in your land who have connections with the scholars and who from you can clearly see that they call to the Sunnah, they defend the Sunnah, they venerate the Sunnah to know who those people are. And once you know who those people are, then you stick to them as a... So, so I guess the point that I'm explaining here is that because it is not possible for a person to know every type of falsehood and to know every type of shubha and to know which person is really upon the sunnah or whatever, then there's like a safeguarding mechanism that you know is found in our religion, which is that those people who are clearly and manifestly upon the sunnah who call to it who defend it, who connect the people to the scholars, who you know clarify these affairs, you stick with them and you befriend them and you accompany them. And as for anybody else who from whom it's it's obscure, you do not know, it's not clear, then as a safety mechanism for yourself, then you just refrain from those people until it is established with you that they are either by way of commendation, either by way of investigation, either by way of examination. These are all ways and means by which, are legitimate ways and means, by which we can examine and investigate and to find out about people where, where, the, where it's not clear to us what, what are they about, what are they upon. And there are ways and means that can be used, you know, uh, which platforms do they sit upon, uh, what is their allegiance, uh, what is their loyalty, what is their friendship, you know, who do they speak ill of? Who do they speak good of? All these things are signs and indicators uh, by which a person can tell. Like a person doesn't have to know all of the intricate details of every little issue, to you know, uh, but he can use these general guidelines to see. And that's why many of the scholars of the Salaf, they used to say that, you know, if you are in Medina, 
then test the people of Medina with Imam Malik. Right? And if you are in another place, in another city, test the people with Mu'afa bin Imran. And if you're in another place, test the people with al awzai Right? So whoever is with them and speaks well of them and is, you know, speaks good of them, then you know that person is a person of the Sunnah. Right? It doesn't mean that you now have to know every single intricacy and detail, you know, because not every person would have that level of knowledge uh, to, 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 you know, uh, look at the shubuhat and see well what this person is saying is it true or not true in cons of the sunnah not cons of the sunnah right you 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 th- these are like uh, general safety mechanisms which exist in our religion for the general people to know like if a person comes today and starts attacking Sheikh bin Baz well straight away you know this person is a dalun modillun uh, misguided straying you know individual anyone who speaks ill about any of the the, the, the scholars Sheikh Al Fawzan uh, you know, Sheikh Al Luhidan, Sheikh Al Bani. Uh, straight away, we know you are a Sahibu Hawa, Sahibu Bid'ah. And likewise, uh, in 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 the lands where people are known and are known to the scholars, and they are manifestly upon that way, and then you you stick with them, and you know you can use that as a general guideline. If you yourself do not have the level of knowledge and understanding to be able to tell. Okay, what is he saying in this issue? I, you know, if you, if you don't have that knowledge, then you basically refrain until the matter is made clear to you and for you by the the people in your in your land who have connection with the, with the ulama and who are upon the way of the ulama, upon the way of the salaf, and who clarify the way uh, for the people. The third thing, obviously, is uh, seeking elm, seeking knowledge, seeking fiqh in the religion, and especially in the issues of aqidah. So this begins by um, you know, learning uh, and studying the books that uh, contain the foundations of our religion. And these types of books are of various types. There are lots <coughs> of books uh, which which are, uh, for example, Usulu Sunnah of Imam Ahmed, uh, Sharhu Sunnah of Imam al Barbahari. Uh, these are the types of books that when you read them, <coughs> you know, in, in small, short sentences, they give you the essence of the creed and the methodology of the Salaf. And through that, you, you develop a good general criterion with which to judge people, uh, individuals and groups and parties to see, well, from what I can see here in this book, is that person or that Jama'ah, are they acting in accordance with this? So, so this type of study uh, you, you must uh, uh, seek uh, comprehension in these types of affairs in the creed and the methodology of the Salaf from the likes of these books. And alhamdulillah, uh, the ulama, the scholars, they have much uh, in by, by way of uh, commentaries and explanations, both short, concise, both detailed and lengthy upon these types of books. So you must seek knowledge in that field to be able to have a furqan, to have a criterion to be able to see uh, for example you know if you if there's some person who claims that he's you know i'm upon the way of the salaf and i'm with the scholars you have people like this present today they're on the tube they're on the media and then you see them wherever they travel like one for example i saw just today uh this uh, uh this clown by the name of abu Taymiyyah. i call him a clown because he's a clown uh the, the, these are media types of you know the, the, these are people I, I spoke about him before as well um you don't need to know anything about what they're saying you just need to look at how they're behaving right when you see a man who markets himself on youtube and when you see that he uses photoshop to put pictures of like profile pictures of you know he's got sheikh albani on this side and sheikh Rufimin on that side in the image and then he puts his own face in the middle enlarge and then he's got a spotlight on him and that's like the splash image for his video like this is just blatant self-promotion and you're making yourself out to be like in the ranks of the scholars and his pictures as well which those scholars don't agree with right so you don't need to know anything else about this person right he could be teaching you all like the books and arabic and aqidah and this and zayz with the scholars you just need to know that this individual is a clown right he's He's marketing himself to people to gain an audience. You do not take this man seriously at all, right? Just like some of the, like some of the 
it's mentioned by the likes of Al-Bukhari and others about him that they saw once a man, you know, he's trying to tempt an animal, a horse, by pretending he's got something to give to the animal and he's like misdirecting the animal. Right, so they said, right, that person, never going to take any narrations from him because that person is not reliable. If he's willing to deceive an animal, then, you know, he could be willing to deceive, right? Basic principle, once you see that, that's it, finish, khalas. It doesn't matter what he's memorized, who he sat with, who he's taken from, whatever. Khalas, that's it, I've seen something from you, finished, right? Same with these types of people, you don't need to, you know, it's, it's astounding that people should be deceived by the likes of these people. Right. As soon as you see that, that's it. Khalas, finish. We've seen your reality. You are a clown. Right? You are a self-promoter. You, you are just after fame and fortune. This is clear evidence that you are after fame. And then you go and you sit on the, you know, whatever you visit in America or whatever it might be. You are with the Diobandis, the Bligis, you are with the Ikhwanis, you sat with them. And just recently there's a picture of him with this uh, Yasir al-Hanafi, this Maturidi, Jahmi Hanafi Muqallid, right? hand, you know, uh, shaking, smiling. And we know what the Salaf said. The man waqqara sahiba bid'atin faqad a'ana ala hadm al-Islam. Whoever honors a person of innovation, this is a mubtadi who believes, you know, uh, who denies the ulu of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? And denies, you know, other, other affairs of creed in opposition to the way of the Salaf and he's upon the way of the Jahmiyyah. How can you stand and flatter and smile and deceive other people, you know, uh, your audience. That that in itself is finished. Khalas, no, you don't need now to argue with him on any issue of knowledge or about any other issue about Salafiya or Dawah. No, we've just seen two things from you which, which are evident about you, right? So this is the benefit of learning the way of the Salaf and implementing what we find in the books, like in the books of the Salaf that we judge you in accordance with these principles and these methodologies. So you so you have a furqan, a criterion, where you can just clearly see, well, this is what I know from the Salaf, and that's what I'm seeing from you, right? But that's enough for me. I don't need to know anything else after this, you know, about any of your speech about Salafiyah and the scholars and about Salafis and about schisms and differences. All that is just kalam farik. All I can, uh, you know, this this one thing is enough for me to know your, know your reality, right? So... Uh, there, there are many things, there are many, many things, as I said, which a person can use in order to protect himself and guide himself in relation to dubious people who make ascription to Salafiya and who are out there in the field, you know, in the field of, of online acting and performing and, you know, building audiences and marketing a brand and whatever. There are many of these types of people in the US, in the UK, everywhere else. This is a fitna uh, and, 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 this type of platform and technology draws out and brings out these types of people. These people would never have existed decades ago. These people only exist with the internet, with these platforms, because uh, in essence, they are performance artists. They perform for the people because they want audiences, right? So very simple, basic principles, which we learn by going back to the books of the Salaf, and we just, if we just implement these principles, you know, then we will be saved from a great deal of confusion, right? And there are other points, obviously, there are these, these are three points I mentioned, there are others as well, but now we'll stop, inshallah.